One of the new civilizations coming with the expansion for Age of Empires for the Sultan's Ascent is the Byzantines. The Byzantines is easily going to be one of the most unique civilizations in the game, with its cistern systems, unique unit mechanics, and a new collectible resource that only they have access to. Today I want to go through the information officially released about the civilization and give like a um, historical overview. But once the expansion is really here, then I'm going to go deeper and do um, the buildings and landmarks comparison to real life, the counterparts of units as well. So I'll not go really deep in this video, but I'm going to try to give an overview and find some relatable and interesting facts about the civilization. In the game, the Byzantines are going to be represented from the 9th to the 15th century. The Byzantine Empire is also known as the Eastern Roman Empire, and it existed until the fall of Constantinople, or Istanbul as we know today, to the Ottomans in 1453. So the Byzantines and the Roman Empire, they are distinguished by the capital moving from Rome to Constantinople, the integration of Christianity, and the predominance of Greek instead of Latin. So the first thing mentioned in the Age of Empires 4 page about the civilization is the fact that they have access to olive oil, a new fifth resource that can be collected and used to hire mercenaries. Let's dissect this information a little bit. What is the relationship between Byzantines and olive oil? Well, olive oils are native to the Mediterranean region, and they have been cultivated since prehistorical times. The earliest archaeological finding of olive oil production were found in in Galilee, and scientists estimate that the residues that they found were at least a thousand years old. In the Romans, they played a very important role in the history of olive oil. They expanded the cultivation and production of olive oil throughout the whole empire. They used the oil for cooking, flavoring as a conservative, and even for medicinal and cosmetic purposes like for perfumes. But the most important point for us is the fact that olive oil played a very important Important role in the empire's economy. This industry, along with other agricultural activities, contributed to the overall economic strength of the empire, and the wealth generated by it was used to pay salaries, like military salaries, including both regular soldiers and mercenaries. And mercenaries played a very significant role in the empire, and they would come from various regions and backgrounds, like the Rus warriors, Norsemen, Slavs, Western Europeans, and so on. This are just a few examples. But this also reflects the multicultural nature of the Byzantine Empire. The next information is about this new building, the Olive Grove, which replaces the regular farms and can generate the olive oil we were talking about. And from this image release, we can see that they look like olive trees indeed instead of the typical wheat farms. The text also mentions a network of aqueducts and cisterns that provide water and a variety of enhancements to villages and buildings. And by connecting the cisterns, to each other, the water level increases, and with that also its benefits. Constantinople had an insufficient supply of water and relied deeply on aqueducts. The first aqueduct system built in the city was the Valens Aqueduct, built between 337 and 373. But just so you have an idea of how important these things were, before the 7th century more than 200 cisterns were built in the city. Now in the game we can only imagine that this is going to require some level of city planning skills to place the thing, you know, the aqueducts properly to fit the buildings, the, the production buildings properly to, you know, take advantage of these benefits as most as you can. And the last paragraph mentions the Greek fire and the new unique unit, the Shadow Siphon. I have no idea how to pronounce that. So I'm sorry. This unit is a modified version of the ram and it spits jets of fire. The Greek fire was invented in 672 by the Byzantines, and even though we don't know exactly what the composition was, we know that it was mainly used during naval battles and was extremely difficult to put it out. It was actually inextinguishable by water. With this civilization in Age of Empires 4, many units are gonna be able to make use of this Greek fire, like trebuchets, like this siphon ram, I'm gonna call it siphon ram, that's so much easier, and the warship Dromon, which I also don't know if I'm pronouncing correctly, Dromon, 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 
Duomo. Now what is cool is that once an area is set on fire, the flames are going to burn for a while and do damage to any unit that you know, comes along and touches it. We also get new information about the new units. The Limitane is going to be a replacement for the traditional spearman, but this unit is going to be able to use a shield wall, reducing the damage, the ranged damage that they take, which is crazy because we don't have that in the game yet. And potentially, this spearman unit, they are going to be the strongest spearman in the game, and that is because they are going to be stronger against their counter unit, which is you know archers, ranged units, another new unit is the Cataphract, a replacement for the knight that has an ability allowing it to charge and do damage to any opponent on its way. This actually makes this unit the first knight with an ability in the game. And finally, in the last section, we see a little bit more about how the Byzantines are going to work through the ages. The first cistern is going to be available already in the H1 and the city planning can already start. Due to this influence bonus area that they provide, I imagine they have to be placed in a way that the cisterns or the aqueducts cover resource gathering areas or production buildings. And we can see from this image that the cistern is located between a mining camp and a wood line, so I imagine that both these areas are, you know, be getting benefits from the cistern. Now the second image is showing us the Grand Winery, one of the landmarks to advance to the feudal age. And this is the landmark that is going to allow you to hire mercenaries using the olive oil resource. And plus, this is also going to work something like a granary, like the Chinese granary, offering bonus production of olive oil in a radius around it. And the second landmark to advance to the feudal age is also mentioned in the text, is the Imperial Hippodrome. And this one we can see in another picture, in an Im image that was released earlier. This landmark is going to be similar to the Cavalry School from the French civilization, so it's just going to act as a stable that produces cavalry faster. Unfortunately, I can already tell you guys, the real-life inspiration, the, the counterpart, the real-life counterpart of this landmark doesn't exist anymore, but it used to be located in the Sultana Met Square in Istanbul. This hippodrome was called the Hippodrome of Constantinople and was used for a horse and chariot races, as you can already imagine. The next image shows us a landmark that you can build to go to the castle age, the Golden Horn Tower. And this landmark is going to recruit mercenaries automatically and for free. Now this landmark is based on the Galata Tower. This watchtower served multiple purposes throughout the years, but according to the Ottoman travel writer Celebi, Celebi, it was from this tower's roof that in 1638, Hitzar Sarfan Ahmed flew strapped in eagle wings and made the first intercontinental flight. Well, this story was certainly exaggerated, but in any case, the stay was pretty famous there. One of the airports in Istanbul is called Hetzarfen Airfield, and there are even movies and TV shows for children all surrounding this topic. And the other landmark that you are going to be able to build to go to the castle age is the Cistern of the First Hill. According to the text, in the page, this landmark is going to provide a powerful healing bonus or healing technology. But by the name of this landmark, I imagine it was inspired on the Basilica Cistern, which is the largest underground cistern in Istanbul. And it's located on the first hill of Constantinople. And what I mean by first hill is the hill on which the city of Byzantium was founded. And on the same hill, you can also find the Hagia Sophia, that is going to be the wonder from the Byzantines, you can find the Blue Mosque, which is the wonder of the Ottoman civilization, and even the Imperial Palace landmark, which is the Topkapu Palace. And finally, to go to the Imperial Age, we are going to be able to choose between the Foreigner Engineering Company and the Palatine School. So according to the image and the text, we can see that this landmark, the, this Foreign Engineering Company is going to act as a siege workshop to produce siege units. And of course, why not? They can also produce, apparently, Nest of Bees. Oh, not again. In the Palatine School, there's not so much information there about it, but um, probably it's going to house some exclusive technologies and improvements or units that you can only find in this landmark. And the cherry on the cake, we cannot leave without talking about the wonder. From other screenshots that they released earlier, we can also say that the wonder is going to be based 
on the Hagia Sophia. And that's all I have for you guys today. And as I mentioned before, this is just an overview. I'm not going deeply into the history. But once the expansion is here, I'm gonna have gameplay. I'm gonna try to save myself. And I'm going to do a deep dive into the history and the real life counterparts of the units and the landmarks. And if you're interested in that, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the notifications and any new videos. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And thank you so much for watching. I see you guys in the next one. Bye!